breaking news in a major escalation of the crisis in the Middle East. Iran has started a direct attack on Israel. Bitcoin over the last week, well, not a pretty picture. Down around 10%. Much of this happening on Saturday when Bitcoin fell the most in more than a year. This as Iran launched attack drones and missiles against Israel. Hey traders, the past week has seen a significant decline in the crypto market from a peak of $71,000 per Bitcoin on Friday to a low of $61,000 on Saturday causing concern and uncertainty within the markets. We saw Bitcoin drop around 7% after Iran's attack. While the headlines are all pointing to the recent escalations between Iran and Israel, it's crucial to analyze the situation with a broader perspective. Here we'll be taking a factual approach to understanding the recent price dip. We'll explore the potential impact of the conflict while considering other factors that might be influencing the market. We'll also delve into historical examples of how markets have reacted to geopolitical events in the past offering insights that might help us navigate this current situation. So let's dive in and explore these narratives. Has really just highlighted to people in the Western world how important money like Bitcoin is in a world that's becoming increasingly uh, surveillance oriented and in a world where banks, in particular central banks, are pushing for more digital money that they can turn on and turn off at the switch of a button. The cryptocurrency market, while brimming with the potential, is known for its volatility. Unlike traditional assets with long histories and established regulations, we need to remember that crypto is still a relatively young asset and operates in a dynamic environment. Right. Bitcoin is still in its immaturity. Uh, I don't believe that we've come anywhere near sort of Bitcoin's fully realized value where it, where it has a monetary premium where it can uh, end up in a more stable place. This translates to price swings that can be more dramatic compared to stocks and bonds. One significant factor influencing these swings is geopolitical uncertainty. So Bitcoin hasn't really been coming through as a geopolitical safe haven in terms, at least in terms of initial price movements. When tensions arise between nations or global conflicts erupt, investors often become risk averse. This means that they pull their money out of riskier assets like crypto and they seek refuge in safer havens like gold or traditionally the US dollar or dollar based products like treasury bonds. This is called a flight to safety and can trigger sell-offs in the markets leading to price drops. However, the relationship between geopolitics and crypto isn't always straightforward. There's a growing narrative that suggests that cryptocurrencies could also act as a safe haven during some conflicts. Here's why this idea emerges. Number one, decentralization. Unlike traditional currencies controlled by the governments, crypto operates on a decentralized network potentially making it less vulnerable to manipulations or sanctions during geopolitical disruptions. Number two, accessibility. Crypto offers a globally accessible store of value, allowing investors in regions with economic instability to potentially preserve their wealth. It's important to remember that the safe haven narrative for crypto is still evolving and being debated. While some evidence supports it, long-term data is limited. And I think this narrative around the link between Bitcoin and tech equities, Bitcoin and inflation, Bitcoin and geopolitical turmoil is just going to take some time for us to really understand what that relationship looks like. If it's causal, if it's inversely correlated, there's just simply not enough data at this point. The only real recent comparison we can draw is from the Russia-Ukraine war. Let's rewind to 2022. Russia invades Ukraine and sends shockwaves through the global financial systems. Bitcoin has taken yet another tumble after making a strong recovery last week. The leading crypto in market cap dropped back to 38,400 US dollars over the weekend as volatility returned to the market. The crypto leaders Bitcoin and Ethereum could be driven to new lows by the ongoing conflict in Eastern Europe. The analysts said that the conflict between Ukraine and Russia is causing economic uncertainties, which is adversely affecting indices, inflation rates and the prices of gold and also Bitcoin. If you pull up a chart of major cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin from around February 2022, you'll see a sharp decline initially from $44,000 to $36,000. This initial price drop mirrored the broader market reaction to the war's uncertainty. However, the story doesn't end there. Interestingly, after a few days, we witnessed a potential shift in sentiment and crypto prices started to recover. The crypto markets took another step higher today, gaining 4.5% by noon Eastern. And believe it or not, that's actually down from the day's highs. Bitcoin rose by about 6% since yesterday, but that's far from the 16% gain earlier in the morning. At one point, it was worth a little less than $45,000. With some analysts suggesting two possible explanations. The first one is this safe haven narrative that we just touched on. With traditional assets experiencing volatility due to sanctions and economic disruptions, 
some investors might have viewed crypto as a potential safe haven, leading to renewed interest. The second theory was the idea that Russian individuals may have been seeking alternative solutions to preserve their wealth, as the world started imposing sanctions on the Russian banks, so price recovery could have been driven by buyers in that region. It's important to note that these are only theories, and it's difficult to say with absolute confidence that these were the main and direct cause and effects. Remember that shortly after, in around May 2022, we saw the failure of Terra Labs and the Lunar Coin, as the UST stablecoin lost its peg, which had a much bigger effect on the crypto market, with Bitcoin crashing to around $17,000 by June. The sudden collapse of Terra sent shockwaves through the crypto industry. According to Elliptic, holders of UST and Luna lost a total of $42 billion. Major investors like Coinbase Ventures lost millions of dollars as well. It's a shocking collapse of a cryptocurrency that reached record highs just a few weeks earlier. Geopolitical tensions can undoubtedly create short-term turmoil in financial markets. But before we hit the panic button, let's take a broader historical view. Let's take a look at stock markets, the traditional investment benchmark, and how they behave during periods of conflict. The S&P 500 index, which shows the top 500 companies in the US, dipped nearly 7% in 2022, over the period from the build-up and in particular during the events as they unfolded. And here you can see the FTSE 250 index, which is the UK equivalent, dropped about 12% over the same period as investors flocked to safer assets. It's true that wars often trigger a period of increased volatility in stock markets. Investors become uncertain about the economic outlook, leading to sell-offs and price fluctuations. The severity of this volatility depends on various factors, including the geographical proximity of the war, the size and the importance of the economies involved, and the potential for wider conflict. Take the recent Russia-Ukraine conflict. The companies within the FTSE index had a much greater exposure to European trade, making it more susceptible to disruptions caused by the conflict. Additionally, these companies were far more reliant on Russian imports and exports, and far more sensitive to hikes in energy prices that were triggered by the war. So it saw a much sharper decline compared to the US's S&P 500. Well, the conflict in Ukraine and the sanctions on Russia have led to another surge in the cost of oil and gas. Traders are said to be struggling to sell Russian oil, even at a discount, because of difficulties in shipping and the payment process. Here's some reassuring news. Studies haven't shown a clear long-term negative impact of wars on stock markets. In fact, some research suggests that markets tend to recover and resume their upward trend after an initial dip. So why the long-term recovery? Several factors contribute to this resilience. The first one is the underlying economy. A strong economy before the war can weather the storm better than a weak one. If the overall economic fundamentals are sound, the market can bounce back. The second is the war duration and intensity. Prolonged and brutal conflicts can have a more lasting negative impact. However, shorter and less disruptive wars may cause less long-term damage. Lastly is government intervention. Governments and central banks can implement policies to mitigate the economic consequences of a war and help to stabilize the markets. How do we apply this to crypto? While crypto is a younger asset class compared to stocks, the governments and central banks are less likely to interject at this stage. But there are some comparisons that we can draw from traditional markets' reactions to war. Overall, it highlights the potential for short-term volatility during the conflicts, but also the possibility of this long-term recovery. Now let's bring it back to the present. The recent crypto price dip has been undoubtedly linked to the tensions between Iran and Israel. But is this the whole story? Here's what we need to consider. We need to look beyond the geopolitics. While the conflict is a significant factor, it's crucial to explore other events or industry trends that might be influencing the market. We've seen a long-term trend of increasing advancements in regulation and legislation. The European Securities and Markets Authority recently released MICA, a comprehensive regulatory regime aimed at crypto assets, providing clarity to crypto asset companies on how to operate compliantly. We've seen Bitcoin ETFs launched in the US and other countries are now starting to jump on the bandwagon. And we know that a large number of countries are actively developing central bank digital currency projects. So the technology is here to stay. The entire bond market is being transformed as we talk right now. I believe the next generation for markets, the next generation for securities will be will be tokenization of securities. Um, we will, and if we can have that distributed ledger that we know every beneficial owner, every beneficial s seller, we all have our, our, our code right. of who's buying, who's selling, instantaneous settlement. Predicting the future is always tricky. There could be a swift recovery, similar to what we saw after the initial dip during the Russia-Ukraine war, 
although if the tensions escalate and more countries start to get involved, then we could see a sustained downward trend. The evidence suggests, however, that over the longer term, we could well see a recovery after the initial drop. This recent price dip just serves as a reminder of the dynamic nature of this evolving market. Geopolitical tensions can undoubtedly trigger short-term volatility in all asset classes, but it's crucial to maintain a broader perspective and focus on the long-term goals. Crypto is an asset class in its own right nowadays, and unless you're gambling on mean coins, I think we're past the times where you can become a millionaire overnight. With the upcoming Bitcoin halving, now we're still on track for a sustained growth throughout this year. So here are some key takeaways to remember to empower you as a crypto investor. First of all, context is king. Don't just jump to conclusions. Analyze the crash by considering the factors beyond just the Iran-Israel conflict. Look for broader market trends and industry news. Learn from history. While short-term volatility is likely during the conflicts, the traditional markets have shown long-term resilience, and this might offer some reassurance for crypto investors as well. Stay informed. Stay updated on the geopolitical developments, but also keep an eye on the regulatory changes, the security updates, and the broader economic trends that can impact crypto prices. And develop a strategy. Don't make impulsive decisions based on panic. Have a well-defined investment strategy that considers your risk tolerance and your long-term goals. This will help you navigate the periods of volatility with a clear head. That's why I have an algorithmic trading strategy in place with Arrow Algo. I don't need to panic when the market shifts. Let's take a look at the orders in my $1,000 challenge strategy. I've talked about this before on my channel. You can check out my previous videos to see how it works. And you can see on Friday night when the news came out, the Solana price started falling. My stop loss kicked in and I only lost 7% when the market continued to drop 19%. It bought back in at about $142 when it looked like the market was starting to recover, but then the second drop came in and my stop loss kicked in again at around $134, and now we've bought back in at around about the same range. So the market overall was down about 25%, and I was only down about 12%. And I have a good re-entry point here now, so if the market starts to recover, I'm well positioned to take advantage. I wasn't panicking over the weekend. I had a nice time. I did some work in the garden, took the dog out for a walk, and went to the pub for a beer or two. I knew that my stop losses would kick in if the market crashed. It's so important to trade without emotion. Remember, Arrow Algo is free to use. There's a ton of support and resources out there. You can go and check it out. Get yourself an automated strategy in place like this one, and you can have some peace of mind too. Obviously, the complex is terrible. My thoughts and prayers go out to anybody that's affected by it. But remember, if you're going to trade during this period, you have to trade without emotions. Keep one eye on the bigger picture and the long-term perspective. Stay informed, stay safe, get an automated strategy in place. Happy trading and see you next time.